Hi everyone, my name is Laura and welcome to Book Bubbler. Today I've got my usual Friday reads for you. It is May the 7th, 7th, let's say. <laughs> um, actually, I have a calendar right here. I lied, it's the 8th. I know my days. Um, actually, no, I don't. <laughs> if I didn't have my phone to tell me what day it was, I wouldn't have a clue. And even then, it's a little iffy, like, oh, it really is Tuesday or whatever it is, you know. Anyways, um, I thought I would start with what I read this week. So it's not a ton. I finished, let's see, one, two, three, a whole four books, which is not great for me. <laughs> Um, but the first two I read were uh, Barbarian Alien and Barbarian Lover, both by Ruby Dixon. These are the second and third books in that Barbarian Alien trilogy. What I forget the trilogy name. That's terrible. It's 20 books, I think, at this point, or 21. Um, so that reading both of those were really fun. It's the same as the first one. You're, each um, book follows a human and her sort of soulmate is the best sort of way to do it, but it's like a different kind of a match. Um, it's like a, yeah, let's just say soulmate, it's easier, um, with these big blue alien guys. So it's a human and alien and their relationship. So you get to know them um, individually, you get to know them as a couple, but you also learn a lot more about the world around them. And there were some very tense moments in the second and third book, um, these ladies, were kidnapped by green aliens, little green aliens, and their green alien sort of bouncers, security guards, were these orange basketball head kind of guys. So they come back in the second book, and um, it's awfully tense. And I mean, I really, I could not hit that little button fast enough to read on my Kindle. Um, so they're both really good. Of course, there's, you know, lots of sexy times and stuff too, but the world itself, and it, they seem like such three-dimensional people, the aliens and the actual humans too. I mean, I am really liking this. So thank you so much, cousin, for talking about the first book in one of your wrap-ups recently. That was what turned me on to it. And it's, they're lots of fun to read, really lots of fun. Uh, the next one I finished is Foreign Eclairs by Julie Heisey. Hizzy, I'm never sure how you say her last name. This is the very last White House chef mystery um, and it's this cozy series. And this one, Olivia, who is the head chef for the White House, she and her husband, Gavin, are pulled back into a plot again with Turkmenistan. I think that's the name of the fake country. Turkmenistan sounds right. Um, and there is a hit out on Ollie's head. So Ollie and Gavin decide to go along with it and try to help bring down these really horrible, scary, scary guys that are out to kill both of them. So where you think it ends is about halfway through where you think the story's going to go, they'll be okay. And then a whole bunch of other stuff hits the fan. So it was really good. I really like Ali. She's a smart person. She pays attention. She doesn't discount anyone else's intelligence. Um, her husband, Gavin, they have a great relationship and he is a very smart, tough guy too. Um, very caring. It's just, this is a really great cozy series. It's not as typically cozy as the others. That may be because a lot of it's set at the White House, but regardless, I really enjoyed it. Three and a half stars, almost four stars. You know, I mean, I really, it's just a bummer that it's over with now, but that's okay. There are always more to take its place, right? And the only other book I finished this week is an audiobook. If I can figure out how to insert an image with this new app, I will do so here. <laughs> Expect to not see something though, sorry. I know myself and I don't think I'll be able to figure it out in time. But anyways, um, it is Failure is an Option, a memoir by H. John Benjamin. H. John Benjamin is a voice actor and he does the voice of Bob from Bob's Burgers and Archer on Archer. I love both of the TV shows. Bob's Burgers is the one that really like makes me laugh all the time. It's really close to my heart. One of my favorite shows of all time. Um, so it's little bits of his life. Uh, it's set up to tell each little chapter is a story about how he failed in one particular instance and how that was a good thing and what he learned from it, if he learned anything or if it's just a stupid 
I crap my pants kind of a thing, um, which is a fairly funny story <laughs> near the end of the book. But um, this one was just okay. I was a little disappointed, to be honest. He seems like kind of a dick. Sorry to say, like, just not, not considerate all the time or super great which is fine like that's fine he doesn't have to be this like stellar human being I'm not looking for Malala here you know um but it was just a bit of a bummer this was also the first time I was able to listen to an audiobook faster than just one speed for some reason I just can't listen that quickly I can read much quicker than I can listen and understand someone so I could listen to this one on two times speed and I didn't miss anything and I didn't have any problems understanding him or anything I don't know I don't know what that says there were cute little like musical additions added in and things and I did appreciate listening to this as an audiobook versus reading it because he is a voice actor he of the two roles of his that you might know him from the two big roles of his I mean he was a voice in Dr. Katz and lots of other stuff too he was also on a couple episodes, I think, of Parks and Recreation as an actor and everything. Anyways, um, squirrel. Um, <laughs> so of the two roles, Archer and Bob Burgers, that he does now that he's most known for, he's much, much, much more Archer than Bob. Like 90% Archer. <laughs> um, so it was okay. I have read um, Eugene Merman's novel or memoir of his life and I couldn't even read it I DNF'd it that was disappointing because Jean is my favorite character on Bob's Burgers um again I realize the actors are not their characters I know this but yeah I just was disappointed so I gave this a two star it was okay it wasn't terrible but it wasn't great a couple of chapters were good but unless you're a super fan of either of these shows, which I kind of am, I wouldn't really say, oh, go out and, you know, get this one. So that's all I managed to finish this week. I am still reading. This is going to be most of this year. Um, let's buddy read of London by Edward Rutherford. I'm reading this with my bestie, Danny at Spinelli Speaks. I'll link her channel below. Um, we have a great new routine that I am super loving. So every, we're a little behind. Uh, it works out to about 100 pages a month to read this book because it's just about 1,100 pages or just over 1,100. Just over 1,100 pages. So it works out that we should read about 100 pages a month. We're about 50 pages behind. We should be in the five to six hundreds this month, I think. Um, so we're not too far off now. But our new routine, which is so much fun, <laughs> Maybe this makes me a big dork. I don't know, but it's so much fun. So every Sunday from five to six, we read together. We check in on Marco Polo beforehand. We take turns picking at like some kind of ambient noise, ASMR, quiet music video on YouTube and um, put that on. So we're listening to the same thing and we read together for an hour. And then when we're done, we talk about what we thought about it. And I, it's so great. It's so much fun. Love you, girl. It's great, Danny. Um, so yeah, I am really excited about this. There have been a few chapters that neither one of us liked too much. Um, the one we're in right now is London Bridge, which is one of the longer chapters. So this is like, you know, mid 1300s. The chapter before was the whorehouse. That was a lot of fun. That was really like pretty fun and funny. There was a great little perfect revenge for someone who was just an a-hole. Um, but it's good. We'll be reading London Bridge this week again, too. Again, it's one of the longer ones. And then after that is Hampton Court, which is very exciting. So, yep, loving this. But again, it's my Sunday read with Danny. And then I am super behind on this, and it's my pick. So for um, my book club I have with my friend Jenna and her sister Michelle, who's also my friend. Hey, girls. Uh, we're in the Bitches Book Club. <laughs> Um, so th it's my turn this time and I chose Time and Again by Jack Finney, which, which is one of my favorite novels of all time. It is time travel, I suppose. He goes back in time into the 1800s of New York, 1880s of New York. It's illustrated, which I absolutely love. I showed this edition recently, I know, uh, but it's so good. We were reading about five chapters a week. I have not started it at all, this reread, and I think this is our third week. Sorry, girls. But you know, you know what I, you know, I, this is what I'm like. So anyways, 
I have to get cracking into this one. I know I'm going to get sucked right in and I'll probably zoom right through it, but um, this is next up to start for me too. Also, a little update on my reading in general. It has not been good. <laughs> I've had a lot of bad days this week and I it's not just anxiety or depression. Maybe it's both and I'm not fully aware of it so much, but I'm having a hard time concentrating on printed books especially. I'm not sleeping well at all. And again, it's not anxiety necessarily that's keeping me up. I'm comfortable. I'm tired. I just don't sleep or I wake up constantly. Um, so maybe that is playing into the not great mood I've been in lately or I mean, who knows? This is like everyone's saying this, but it's really true. It's such a weird time. You know, um, my daily life is not that different from pre-quarantine, but it's still, it's just different. So my goal for this month for myself, since my birthday is this month in May, is to just read what I want guilt-free. I have been guilty myself a lot about reading. I really had a hard time feeling like I should be reading something else, regardless of what it is, if it's something I want to read or not. Like when, as a good example, when Dan and I read London on Sundays, I feel like as soon as I finish my 50 or 100 pages or whatever, I should switch to a different book right away because I should just use my reading time wisely. That's so nonsensical. It, I, it makes no sense whatsoever, but I always feel like I'm making a mistake with reading. So I had a little waffle yesterday with how I really felt about reading and talked to Jenna and Michelle about it a little bit. And they made good points, like just read what you want. Like that's the only rules for reading is to read what you want and just keep doing that forever I'm like okay that's good and then um another, the other piece of advice they had was to imagine that I just read what I wanted like then what would happen what's the consequences of that like you really enjoy what you read so okay isn't that the whole point like yes thank you touche so I am getting back into the reading train last night I started reading finally started reading the Witcher series and I am really liking the first book The Last Wish um so far, about half of what I have read, it's like individual, each chapter is an individual story. Um, about half of what I've read has been in the first season on the TV show. So it's been interesting to see what they changed and what they didn't. It's pretty close. I mean, for an adaptation, it's actually pretty close from what I've read so far. And it does help to get character names correctly. I am a person who needs to know how to spell something to get it right in my head. And when someone says a word to me, I, it's just spelled instantly in my brain. I can see it in my brain. Um, so to have more unusual names, place names and, you know, actual human or non-human names too, um, in print helps to get them in my head a little bit more and I understand it better. So I am really digging that. Um, outside of that, I'm trying not to force myself to get anything. And like every time I feel nervous about it, I'm like, nope, just... Stop and enjoy yourself. So I'm hoping I can keep up that momentum, this good reading mojo momentum going for the next week. Um, the one thing I did not cover yet was what came into my house. So I have seven books that came in this week. This is from Paperback Swap, The Wings of the Sphinx by Andrea Camilleri, Andrea Camilleri, excuse me. This is the 11th book in the Inspector Montalbano mystery series set in Italy. I don't know if it's always in Venice or not, but the first couple are in Venice. Mm. Don't know. So now I have the majority of this series, which is 20 some books. Maybe it's close to 30 now. I know he passed away a couple of years ago, but um, yeah, I have not even read one of them, but I own almost all the books. Hi, nice to meet you. My name's Laura. <laughs> I'm a crazy person. Um, <laughs> then the only book that I bought that I paid full price for was Be Still My Bleeding Heart by San Santa Hannah Reed. Oh my gosh. Laura. Um, this is a fourth in what was originally just a cozy mystery trilogy with an American going over to Scotland and living there. I just happened to look up this author. She is actually a local to me author, which is about a half an hour from me, um, which is kind of a fun little tidbit, I suppose, if you live near me, you care, otherwise you probably don't. Um, 
but the first three were so good. My mom and I both read them and thought it was really a little bit different and really nice characters. Of course, Scotland is always a great setting for anything at all, but um, really liked them a lot. And I thought, oh, I'll just look up this author and see if she has anything new. It's been quite a few years. And then, boom, there was this. Now, for some reason, when I looked it up, yes, I did buy it on Amazon. Don't hate me. Um, the Kindle available, copy was available right away, but because my mom also reads them and does not have an e-reader, I thought, well, I'm just going to get the paper copy. That's how we read them before. So for some reason, this wasn't supposed to come out in physical form until I think July or August. And I thought, I don't care. It's I'll pre-order it now. doesn't matter to me as long as I know it's coming to me and it's something we both like. So ordered it, pre-ordered it, and it appeared at my house within a week. I don't know what happened there. Also, a little weird aside, this is a trade paperback size. The other three in the book and the series are only in mass market. That annoys the crap out of me. I mean, it's fine. It'll be okay. The cover is very similar, like same kind of layout and everything, but it's not the right size. Why? Why? So this is coming up. Mom, if you're watching this, look what I have. Isn't this exciting? Um, okay, so then used things I bought. London Letters by Lucy Loves This. So it's 26 maps all about things around London, popular neighborhoods and stuff. So just to show you, this is one of the chapters. So you have this little thing, London Zoo in Regent's Park. And it opens up and you have an illustrated map on one side and then what to do on the other side. Stations, food, drink, landmarks, trying to spot interesting facts, and then the back is a bucket list for each neighborhood. So, not only am I a sucker for anything British, um, I love maps, love them. I love unusual format printed things, interactive stuff like this. Like this, I think will help me get some of the districts a little more in my head, since I've never been to the UK at all. Um, so I'm looking forward to going through this multiple times and just kind of semi-salivating over the thought of actually being able to go there at some point and maybe do some of these things. I found out about this from someone's YouTube channel. They mentioned, maybe it was Jen Campbell. I bet you it was Jen Campbell. Whoever it was, I will put a link below to the video where they talked about unusual formats or different setups for books, but I think it must have been Jen. Anyway, so Yes, excited about this. The other used copy I got was Lady of the Forest by Jennifer Roberson. This is the first in a duology based on Robin Hood and May Marian, obviously the whole Robin Hood myth. Um, tell you half price, sorry, <laughs> professional. Um, I heard about this on Badger Reads channel. She's a newer channel to me, but I really like her style. I like her whole setup. She seems very Hufflepuff, <laughs> which I am a Hufflepuff too, so I appreciate. Um, but she reads some really interesting books, a lot of science fiction and fantasy, probably more fantasy than anything else. But I just like her delivery. I like her thoughts about books. I like her reviews. And I love Robin Hood stuff. So it's a chunkster. That doesn't bother me at all. So I got this first one, which for a 1995 edition, it's in excellent shape. So that was even more exciting. So that came in. Then, these next two are from my mom. It is Summer Wine and Other Stories by Peter Salas. Um, I grew up watching Last of the Summer Wine. I'm sure a lot of people did who are Anglophiles or actually British. <laughs> um, but it's been running or, or has run. I think it's still on the air, isn't it? Maybe it's not. It was like 30 years or something it was on the air. But Peter Salas, I just like him. I like his character a lot, too, in the series. Um, and I love that he does the voice of Wallace and Wallace and Gromit and I don't know I just it should be really interesting not only hearing about the show but hearing about his life and things so good old Clegg and then the other one my mom gave me was The Happy Medium by Kim Russo she is a medium she's got a show on I think it's Lifetime still called The Haunting of where she takes celebrities through, like they, she went to celebrity at a place where they had some kind of, you know, spiritual, psychic something encounter or something that scared them, haunting, whatever. And she talks them through what really happened and they help resolve the fear around that and maybe send someone on or whatever. We both really like 
stuff about mediums and spiritualists and things. So this should be pretty good. I like Kim. She's a positive person and yeah, this should be really interesting. And the last book that came into my house this week is not exactly a book. This is from my friend Michelle. Hey, Michelle. And, oh, it's New York City in 3D in the Gilded Age. So, oh, this is put out by the New York Historical Society. So in here, there is a book that covers the history and people about the Gilded Age in New York City. Really lovely illustrations, nice, nice information. This will be a treat to go through. So you have that and you also have the stereoscope and a whole huge stack of photographs. So you prop them into the little slot here and then you can look through it and it looks like it's 3D. Now this is gonna be a super awesome picture of me. But ooh, that's amazing. Ooh, even more amazing when it falls in your face. But you can adjust to the right point so it looks like it's a 3D image by looking through here. So I am really excited about this. I love New York City and the Gilded Age. I mean, I love the Gilded Age in general. Any kind of thing to do with like high society people is fascinating to me, mostly because I like reading about their downfalls and their weirdness because people are just people wherever they are in the world and whenever. Um, but yeah, this is super exciting. So I think I'm, what I think I'm going to do is work on reading time and again, and then dive right in since it's the same time period, go right from this to reading this and looking at all the awesome pictures. So that's everything from this week that I finished reading, stuff that came in, lots of normal ramblings like usual. Um, if you are new here, I have some new subscribers. Thank you so much for subscribing. I really appreciate it. I am getting around to getting back to everyone and refollowing people and commenting and stuff. It's taken me a while, sorry. Um, but thank you so much for subscribing. I really appreciate it. And to everyone who has been here before and is already a subscriber, thank you so much. I love you guys, you're wonderful. I hope you are doing well. I hope you're taking care. Um, if you have any comments on anything that I talked about today or um, anything at all, let me know how you're doing. I would love to have a little chat with you in the comment section. Stay well, stay safe, stay healthy, stay home, and I will talk to you guys soon in the next one. Bye.